Hello everyone, welcome again. In our previous video, we have talked about what is a keystone species, flagship species, foundation species, and invasions, invasive species. So in, continu in continuation to our previous uh, video, uh, in this, uh, we will like, we'll discuss about the other four types of species, which are umbrella species, indicator, endemic, and sentimental species. And to kick start with, let's first see what is an umbrella species. Look at the picture carefully, and I hope it makes sense in a, in, in a while from now. What does it mean? Okay. And to understand what is an umbrella species, I'll be, use, I'll be using an example by taking an example of an Amur tiger, which is also formerly known as a Siberian tiger. Okay, so these tiger are actually uh, falls under the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Flora and Fauna, falls under the Appendix 1, meaning that the uh, trading of this animal is prohibited. All right. So you see now this Amur tiger, which is in Siberia particularly, okay, their population has declined drastically. And the reason for this drastic decline in population is basically due to the illegal deforestation in the region and also as the heavy poaching which is taking place. Okay, so now what happened now? These animals are under constant threat of extinction again. Okay. So if we do not conserve this animal, they will most likely to be extinct from the face of the earth. So we have to conserve these animals. Okay. So for conserving this animal, let's say this is an area where they are found. Okay. So for conserving this animal, this uh, for uh, conserving the Amur tiger, this uh, area will be considered or will be considered, will be uh, 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 declared as a protected area. Okay. So however. Because of the conservation of this particular species which is found in this particular region, what happened now, even the other species which are found in this protected area are also indirectly have been protected. Okay, so therefore these Amur tiger act as an umbrella. Okay, act as an umbrella for since we are just trying to conserve the Amur tiger, but since it is an umbrella species, Therefore, the, even the other species which are found within in this protected area are also conserved or protected. Okay, so therefore, an umbrella species is a species which is selected particularly for its conservation. However, for by conserving this particular species, even other species are also protected or conserved. Okay, that is what it mean, uh, means by what is a umbrella species. And a few examples of umbrella species, if you can see from India, are for example, the uh, Asiatic lion in the Gujarat National Park. Okay, so basically the main aim is to conserve this Asiatic lion. But even whatever other species found in that uh, uh, in that uh, national park, they have been also conserved and protected. Similarly, with that our Bengal tiger in the Sundarbans and the one hand rhino, which is in the Kazirama National Park. So one protection of one, even the other also benefited. Okay, so this is what we mean by umbrella species. Now let's see what is an indicator species. Okay. All plants and animals, they live and grow, they reproduce and multiply under certain environmental conditions. Okay, like for example, in this case, let's say these are the different types of uh, amphibians which are found in this water body. And you'll see on the trunk of the tree, you'll see that there are different types of lichen species that are growing here. Okay, however, let's say this area, so this is the normal condition in which you'll find these species here. But however, if this normal condition is disturbed, let's say due to pollution of the air, the pollution of the water, or the introduction of chemicals into the soil, and what will happen now, this introduction of these unwanted substances into this environment will change the environmental condition of this area. So as when these changes take place, what will happen now, then few uh, do these changes takes place particularly due to the degrading quality of the environment. What happened now? Some species will start to disappear from this particular. Uh, some species will start disappearing from the particular ecosystem or from a particular habitat. Okay, so such species which act as an indicator was showing or telling us that there is something which there which is not desirable for them 
So what happened? They start disappearing or maybe just die. Okay, the population just died. For example, let's say these are the same place here. This is like the original uh, uh, area. What happened now? Let's say some mining activities takes place there. Now the water is contaminated with, uh, let's say, with acid mine drainage. Okay, so now obviously the, this different type of uh, the, the climatic or the water quality of this area is suitable for them to grow will not be suitable anymore. What happened now? These plants, uh, the animal species, or uh, the amphibian species, will not be able to adapt to grow in this. What happened? So they happen now. They will be start disappearing, and as a result, there will be no life form found in this water body. And let's say in the same place here. Now, some uh, let's say we have the uh, mining take place here and it's converted into this form. And let's see now, so we are burning a lot of fossil fuels here, okay, for some other purpose, just uh, assuming that. Now, let's see that now what happened now, the trees are the lichens, which are a symbiotic association between the algae and the fungi, okay, they are very sensitive to the increase in concentration of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere. So what if you keep on burning, uh, uh, keep on burning uh, fossil fuels now, these uh, lichen species will start disappearing and you'll see that there is no species, uh, there's no lichen found or to grow in the uh, area where the air is contaminated. Okay, so such species are known as an indicator species. Okay, because they indicate, okay, there's a pollution or there's a something change in there. That's why we are not, uh, uh, we are not, uh, uh, it's not suitable for us to be staying there so therefore we either move out or either they die okay all right so that is what it meant by indicator species now what is an endemic species endemic species i think is quite common to all of you i think you've heard of this actually these are just in short it's like endemic species are those species which are fine or confined to a particular region or a particular geographical region area only okay they are found nowhere else in the world the simplest example to understand what is an endemic species is if you think of is an emperor penguin, which is found only in the Antarctica and nowhere else in the world. Obviously, isn't it? And then kangaroo, which is found only in Australia and nowhere else in the world. Okay, so these are the endemic species. If you take an example of uh, the endemic species in India, the Nilgiri blue ribbon, which is found in the Nilgiri uh, in the south, uh, in the forest in the south, and the Kashmiri star, which is found in the Kashmir Valley. You will find this nowhere else except only in these respective places. Okay. In the same context, if you talk from Northeast India, you'll see that there's Sangai deer, which is found in the Loktak Lake in Manipur. You'll find it nowhere else in the world except there. And similarly, with the picture plant or the Nepenthes cassiana, is found only in Megalia and nowhere else. It's this very endemic. Okay. These are the, so that's what it means by endemic species. Now let's see what is a sentinel species. A sentinel species are actually also some kind of an indicator species, but they are basically animal species. Okay, first thing first, and then they act, actually these are act as an what do they do? Is that they they uh, they show some kind of an early warning if there is any unwanted change in the environment of in terms of pollution or the chemical present in the environment. All right. So basically, for example, if you take an example of a domesticated canary, it as, as the literature, they say that um, uh, the miners, the coal miners, they used to carry this canary to inside the mine, uh, inside the mine, and in case, well, you know, inside, if case the carbon, carbon monoxide concentration tend to increase, um, concentration uh, increases, so these birds uh, they start becoming weird, okay, they behave, start behaving weird. So that's indicated for, indicated that, okay, that there's uh, the uh, there's something uh, you know related to the uh, health aspect of uh, showing as some kind of an early sign warning to the to human beings and similarly with that of the frogs in any uh, particular streams or lakes if it is water is contaminated or polluted you see that there'll be no frogs or uh, there'll be no frogs uh, found in that particular streams okay so therefore sentinel species are basically these okay often they are often animals and then they actually they show some kind of early advance warning of the danger and basically they as an indicator for respect to health threat to human okay so with this i think we have come to an end these are the reference that we used in the discussions and we have come to an end of these uh, different types of species used in, uh, in in biodiversity and conservation and i hope with this uh, video you will get to learn an idea about these different terms you might have heard or might have heard before and I hope you will understand what does it mean by now. And uh, I, I hope and I wish uh, you'll learn.
learn more from this. Thank you so much and thank you for your attention and God bless.